Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Meeting House Church. We are so glad that you are joining us today. My name is Leah Appleton, Emerging Generations Associate here at Meeting House Church. And today is our Senior Baccalaureate service. This morning, you'll be introduced to our wonderful seniors, hear about their plans for the future, and some of their favorite memories here at Meeting House Church. They even picked out the music for the service. Working closely with this group of students over the past two years, I am thankful and humbled by the humans that they are. These seniors are resilient, fierce, and really encompass our core value of welcome beloved. They not only believe that God's love is for them, they deeply believe it is for every person. Seniors, as we send you into your next chapter, we are cheering with excitement for the ways you will radically continue to love your neighbor and do good in this world. Thank you for all the ways you've participated in this community. You will always have our support. Now before the service begins, I want to make sure that you know your way around the online worship experience. Check out the description below and find helpful links for you to get the most out of today's service. You'll find PDFs of our handouts, links to learn more about our community, and find ways to submit prayer requests. And of course, you can always find these things on our website at meetinghouse.church. Now as we're getting ready to start this morning, send us a message in the chat and let us know where you're joining us from today, or send a special message to our graduating seniors. And from all of us here at Meeting House Church, welcome. Good morning, Meeting House Church. It is good to see you. Uh, welcome. This is uh, one of our worship expressions here at Meeting House Church. Uh, typically, we have the alternative service here in the Great Hall, and obviously this morning, uh, we have one wonderful joint service in here, so we're really happy you could join us. Today is Senior Baccalaureate. We'll be uh, highlighting and celebrating our seniors. If you're looking for them, they're right here. They're right up here, front and center. Uh, just some logistical things. It is Communion Sunday. If you have not yet uh, grabbed a communion cup, they're at the front, uh, front table. Um, and we're going to, if you're new to, to this space with the alternative service, we like to, to ease into the pool. We kind of start a little slow. Uh, and so we're going to take a few minutes to uh, either reflect by yourself or we encourage you to maybe turn around and talk to a neighbor. We've got some reflection questions. And with today being Senior Baccalaureate, our questions are, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? If you had 18-year-old self in front of you, what would you tell them? Um, and that goes both ways. That could be younger self. And if, if uh, you're not 18 yet, what, what, what would you tell future self? And then a very related question uh, for folks who are maybe looking backwards. How have you changed the most since you were 18? And maybe what are some things that are still, like, still the same uh, as, as, as you've gone through life? And then obviously for the younger crowd, who, who do you hope your 18-year-old self is? So we'll spend about five, six minutes doing that. Uh, once again, welcome. We're glad you're here.
All right, quick question for some of the older folks who, who hasn't changed at all since you're 18. Anyone exactly the same? Okay, that's probably healthy. Oh, I see one hand back there. Actually, I don't know if they're waving at someone. Okay, that's probably healthy. You've changed at least somewhat. Um, so this morning, before I say anything else, uh, can we put our hands together and congratulate the class of 2022 up here? Everybody's looking at you. <laughs> uh, so these are five of our seniors. Um, we, you know, this is uh, kind of a, a representation of the whole group. We've got uh, some seniors who couldn't make it today, uh, whether conflict or they were sick. But uh, this class of seniors is an eclectic group. Some of them have helped me and uh, Leah Appleton, especially uh, when we started this job two and a half years ago. Um, I would say most of these seniors, their memories of this whole place predate my own. Uh, they have fond memories of going to Pyro, uh, maybe going to Columbia, maybe Crash, all of that. Um, but with this particular class of seniors especially, uh, I think about how the heart of their high school years was, was taken from them. When they should have been with their friends and classmates, they had to lean in and learn about their own resiliency, their, their own ability to take care of themselves. Um, so with that said, seniors, I am very glad this past year you've been able to get back to a lot of things you love. You know, hockey and choir and band and cross-country skiing, frisbee, maybe hanging out here, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but all those things. So we're really happy for you that, that senior year was the way it was. Today's theme is making known the unknown God, uh, and I don't want to give away any spoilers, so I won't like talk about that at all. Uh, but um, one other quick note, logistically, uh, we have our worship uh, bulletins for you. Most of you hopefully have it uh, in your hands right now. If you're watching online, you could, you could click on the, the link in the description and get a PDF file. Uh, a couple things you'll, you'll note if you haven't been in this space before. Uh, one, we do like to spend a lot of time uh, reflecting. Um, today, we won't do as much of that. It'll be kind of general reflecting as we think about the past 18 years for these, for these seniors. Um, but you'll notice with the three songs, uh, we typically have a little song description of why that song was picked. Typically, it's, uh, it's uh, something that connects to the theme of the day. Uh, in this case, we had three of our seniors pick songs uh, that was meaningful to their spiritual journey. So you could, you could see that in there. Uh, with that said, as we head on to our theme, I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Jeff Lindsay to come up for our scripture and prayer. Well, I also would like to add my congratulations to you all. I, I've been here forever since dirt was new, so uh, I remember when many of you were just little kids in the life of this church and we're so proud of you so proud of you and so for us to take some time and honor you and bless you and send you on your way and remind you we're going to keep after you as well this isn't the end of our relationship and so we're excited to see what God will do in your lives going forward so our scripture today is from Acts 17 you know we've been in a series uh, in Acts as we've been working our way through there thinking about what the mission of the church is and how we can continue to be more and more missionally this passage picks up with Paul preaching and getting in trouble with a mob, and so he's chased out of town, and some of his friends take him to Athens to kind of hang out until things settle down, and so some of his friends can catch up with him. And so we got to pick up the story there, Acts 17. While Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Oropagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us. So we would like to know 
what it means. Now, all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling and hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Oropagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects you worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of their places where they would live. So that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of the mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed. But others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysus, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. May God bless the reading of this scripture this day. Let's pray. God, we are here, your people gathered in your name. We've opened up your word and we've heard from your word and we we ask that you, by the power of your spirit, would lead us, guide us, help us to better understand who we are and who you are and what that means in the relationship you desire to have with us. Thank you for chances to celebrate and give you thanks. Of course, we're thinking about our, our seniors, uh, the graduates this, year, this day. But we also think about the many places where we see your hand. We recognize your love. We're encouraged by your presence. So in this hour, we ask that your spirit would fall upon all of us, that we would leave renewed and focused on making this world a better place. Speak to us through the words of the music, through the words that you've put on Andrew's heart, and through just the conversations we have one with the other. We ask that you be blessed and honored that we say and do, and we pray you do your good work in us and through us. For we pray this in your name. Amen. I invite you, stand if you're able, and let us sing together.
Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is George Dornbach, uh, and I am the children's ministry associate here at Meeting House Church. Woo-woo, yeah. Woo-hoo. We love our children's ministry group. We've got an awesome team with Colleen and Jane and Ainsley and a whole group of volunteers. Right now is our time in the service where we dismiss uh, our friends in God's garden, which is anybody in nursery through fifth grade uh, for our Sunday programming, which is what we call God's garden. So I'm going to invite them up to the front right now. We sing a little God's garden song. But before we do that, we have some amazing seniors here who are awesome. And some of those seniors uh, have been helping us in God's garden for as long as I can remember. Uh, Especially this year and last year too, as I've been here and been new. But Kenzie, Elise, and Connor, uh, who is not here with us right now, but they've been ever present in our programming uh, with these kids, being amazing role models, uh, loving, caring, kind, just everything that I hope uh, for these friends up here to be like are, are those three right there. And we are so, so immensely thankful for them and for all that they've done for our friends here. So right now we're going to sing our God's Garden song uh, and the band is going to take us away in that. Amazing. Uh, we will sing the God's Garden song twice. The first time, if you already know it, sing with us both times. Um, but the first time, you can, you can listen if you haven't heard it before. And the second time, the expectation is that everybody's going to sing nice and loudly, okay? So here we go.
Yeah, they rocked it. And normally we say goodbye church, but today, friends, what I want you to do is on the count of three, as loud as you can, say goodbye Kenzie and Elise. Can oh we do that? Oh my goodness. On the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah. Goodbye Kenzie and Elise. And then let's also say goodbye seniors on the count of three. One, two, three. And church, on the count of three, I want you to say, have fun, kids, as loud as you can. One, two, three. Have fun, kids. Amazing. Friends, let's go on our God's garden today. I think we go sit. I think we'll sit. I think. Are you okay? You guys have allergies? Is that allergies? Allergies, okay. <laughs> uh, since for some folks you might not know these seniors, uh, we figured the best people to introduce them would be them. So at this point, I'd like to invite up our five seniors. All right. Elise being the most brave, going first. So. I have prompted them. This isn't all just off the cuff. Uh, But they're going to be sharing uh, who they are, their plans for next year, uh, and then some fun questions like what was their favorite memory uh, of being at Meeting House Colonial, uh, and then what is one of their hopes for this place? So, Brave Elise, you can start us off. Hi, guys. (laughs) My name is Elise. I am a senior, obviously. I'm also an intern here. Um, I will be going to Marquette University next fall, this fall, um, and uh, my favorite memory, it was hard to pick, but I think was going to my, my Columbia mi- um, mission trip that I went on, I think summer after freshman year, and a hope I have for this church is that we can just grow in loving others. Hi, I'm Annika Page. Um, I'm a senior at Edina High School, and I'm going to UW-Madison next year. One of my favorite memories here was my confirmation trip at Tony Jones' cabin, and I hope that Meeting House continues to grow and more kids come. Hi, I'm Abby Mannard. I'm going to St. Olaf next year. Um, my favorite memory was also confirmation at Tony Jones Cabin and growing closer with our confirmation group. Um, and I hope the Ming House Church continues camps like Pyro. My name's Ellen Norman. I'm going to the University of Minnesota. Um, <laughs> Um, My hope for the church is that we can bring back Pyro, and my favorite memory was also going to Pyro. (laughs) (laughs) Hey guys, I'm Kenzie Meadows. I am an intern here at the church with Elise and Connor. Um, I am going to Gonzaga University next year for psychology and Spanish. Um, (laughs) My favorite memory, I have so many to choose from. Um, I've been going here for literally my whole life, so... It's hard to choose one, but I mean, Columbia was amazing, so I think that I would probably go with that. Um, And then one hope that I have for this church in the future is that it just continues to grow and we continue to be as welcoming and encouraging as we can be um, towards everybody, not towards one specific person, but towards everybody. So, yeah. Uh, And I did want to highlight two of our other seniors who are around often. Uh, They couldn't be here, but one, uh, Addie Phillips. Addie Phillips is going to Madison next year to study fine arts. Uh, Addie is not feeling well, uh, and they're at home right now. And I do want to apologize to Addie. We did not play the Ice Cube song you requested. (laughs) Didn't really fit the vibe, but... And he did ask me about that. Uh, And then the other senior, you've heard his name a couple times, Connor Lund, uh, is going to University of Utah next year, uh, studying data science. Uh, And yeah, we love him all a lot. And we're not the only folks who uh, care about these seniors. Uh, Right now, seniors, if you want to look at the screen, here are uh, some congratulations. No, that's you. Uh, But some congratulations from some others. Uh, that's a big 
deal. And we are so thankful for you and your time and your love and your energy uh, that you've given not just to uh, our little kids um, in our program, but also to everything that you've done for this community as a whole throughout your entire time at Meeting House. We miss you a lot. We're so thankful for you and can't wait to see where life takes you down the road. Happy graduation, seniors. I couldn't be more excited for you guys. It has been just such a privilege to be a part of your journey. Um, from high row to all the way to graduation, um, it's been so cool watching you all grow into the wonderful people you are today. I um, I just can't wait to see what your next chapter holds in store for you, and just remember to always have a place to call home when you do come back. Hey seniors, um, I just wanted to say congratulations. I'm so incredibly proud of you guys for everything that you've accomplished over the last few years and that the high school journey that you guys have been on has not been an easy one. Um, but you guys continue to amaze all of us every single day. Um, I love you guys and I'm so honored that I've gotten to be a slim, slim part of uh, your lives. And I just have so many wonderful memories with these seniors that I will cherish for a very long time, whether that's road trips, camping trips, um, or struggles with Abby's dog, Carl. All right, I love you guys. Congratulations. Happy graduation, seniors. I am so incredibly proud of all of you um, for all the things that you guys have accomplished through all the COVID years and just everything that this world has given to you guys. You guys are so strong and resilient. It has been so much fun getting to know all of you, um, even from when you guys were in sixth grade and running around this church and to Cairo and to now. Um, it has been so much fun, you know, seeing you guys grow into the amazing and awesome adults that you are. Um, we love you guys and we are so incredibly proud of you and just know that we are always just a phone call or text away. Love you guys. Congratulations. Hello, seniors. I am so sorry I can't be there to celebrate with you today. I first off want to say thank you. Thank you for being the crew that really welcomed me in two years ago. The crew that has stuck through many changes and contributed to this community in so many impactful ways. You are some of the most incredible, fierce, and inspiring people. I am really humbled to experience the ways you care, really deeply care about others. I'm blown away by your resiliency to continue fighting for justice in this broken world. You all deeply believe that God's love is radical enough and truly for every single human, no matter their story or what they believe. Don't lose this. Hold on to the fight. Keep providing spaces of care and healing and never ever stop believing that God's love is truly for all. You are loved, and I will always be here to cheer you on and support you into this next chapter. Hey guys. Hey guys. So, Dr. We're here to just say congratulations. We're so proud of you all for graduating, and we're so excited. Class of 22. Yes, yeah, we're so excited for all that's to come. College is amazing, or whatever you're up to next is going to be wonderful. You know it. I know you've been through a lot of hard times the last couple of years with COVID and everything. And this is just going to be an amazing time for you coming up. So it's all gonna get better from here. Yeah, congratulations and we'll be praying for you guys. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Hey seniors, congratulations on finishing high school. It's crazy because it feels like yesterday that you guys were starting your freshman year of high school and I was starting my job at Columbia. But here you are graduating, having made it through some of the hardest years to be in high school. But you did it. And now you get to move on to bigger and better adventures. Whether that's going to college or trade school, starting a job, taking a gap year. Whatever you're doing, these are going to be really formative years of your life. Um, it might not look like what everybody else looks like. It might not look like what you expect it to look like. But no matter what, it's going to be good. And you're going to learn a lot about yourself. So I'm so excited to hear about your, your future plans when I'm home this summer. And I'm so excited and so proud of you. Hey, Confermans, Tony here. How's it going? You're graduating seniors now. Hey, congratulations. Okay, I know I taught you a lot about Christianity. Probably just about everything you know. About the Trinity, about the Bible, about Jesus, 
you know, all the important stuff. You may see behind me a lake, and it may, may be somewhat familiar to you. You almost died on this lake, between behind a speedboat that I was driving. Now, look, at the time you thought, Tony is just a crazy speedboat driver, but no. You see, there was a lesson in that for you. I wanted you to get so close to death that you would think about where you're going to go when you die. And about eternal matters. About heaven and hell. That's what I wanted you to think about. And so sure enough, I took you on that very lake back there. Remember? And I did my patented move. We call it the circle of death. And there's weeds. Maybe some of you fell off. I think some of you remember. Maybe, possibly the circle of death on the tube behind my boat. Just remember that. Of anything you remember about Christianity, remember that. Remember how close you came to seeing the Lord face to face. But seriously, congratulations. I knew you could do it. Graduating from high school. Big deal. It's awesome. I love the year that I spent with you all. It was super fun. And I miss seeing you. And uh, hey, enjoy your summer, and good luck in your future endeavors. Well, it's a privilege to now be able to pray over you, many of whom I knew when you were younger through Crash, through Pyro, and now to be back and to see the incredible adults you have all become. So join me in prayer. It is not a short prayer. It's a long one. So <laughs> let's pray together. God, what a gift these graduating students are. Their uniqueness, their beauty, their character, and their gifts. We are grateful for who they are, and we celebrate all they have accomplished. We thank you, God, for those that helped bring them to this place today. Friends and family, many of them present today, gave and sacrificed and encouraged in order that we could be here today. May those loved ones also celebrate and soak up these summer days together. God, we thank you for these students' presence in our church community. We ask that the bonds that have been created here remain strong despite any distance and that these graduates know our doors at Meeting House Church always remain open for them and that the emerging generation staff always are ready to buy them lunch when they're home for a visit. Now, God, as these graduates celebrate the conclusion of one chapter, we pray that you will give them direction and purpose and perseverance to begin their next chapter. For Abby, who you, God, have created with so much strength, talent, and determination, we pray, God, that as she navigates the ups and downs of college, she might run to you as her source of joy and peace. Make yourself known to her at St. Olaf and help her to feel at home there, both on the field and off. For Addie, we thank you for how you have gifted her with authenticity curiosity to ask questions, and a desire to seek out truth. We pray that as she heads off to Madison, she would find her place there, her place and her people with whom she feels seen and a deep sense of belonging. For Annika, God, what a gift to celebrate Annika today, her accomplishments, her athleticism, and all you have created her to be and the delight she brings to so many. We pray that her kindness and joy might radiate throughout Madison and that as she begins her time there, we pray she would be rooted and established in your love, God. For Connor, God, we know that Connor's intelligence and humor and willingness to go all in for everything he does will help him build connections in Utah like it has in so many ways here. And we pray that you would give him an abundance of confidence to believe in himself and believe that you are with him, you are for him, and you are working through him. For Ellen, God, we thank you for who Ellen is, for how she is genuine, fun-loving, a solid friend, and talented in so many ways. 
We know that college brings waves of unending ups and downs. And we pray that at the U, your love might be an anchor for Ellen in the midst of all the change. Might she feel your reckless love, God, and might she be a vehicle through whom others can experience that same reckless love. For Elise, who has blessed this church, her school, her teams with her leadership, you have truly equipped her to be a difference maker and one who can show the whole world that we are not alone. We pray that you would prepare her for the journey ahead while reminding her how cherished she is. And as she heads off to Marquette, we pray for peace to know that she is exactly where she is meant to be. For Kenzie, God, you have truly created Kenzie to embody a welcoming spirit. Her joy, compassion, and ability to connect with others shines your love for all those she meets. And even though she's already a college student, we pray that when she moves onto campus at Gonzaga, she will find a new and extraordinary community, one that she can lean on. God, as these graduates go on from here, both prepared and unprepared for what awaits, may grace abound for them. May they always be courageous enough to ask for help and remember that God is with them wherever they go. They are never alone. And when falling or failing comes, May they feel your presence, God, and may they know the joy of rising again. Stir in them an eagerness to bring goodness into this world and the foolishness to believe that they can make a difference so they will do the things which others say cannot be done. And as these graduates, Abby, Addie, Annika, Connor, Ellen, Elise, and Kenzie, Continue to become who you created them to be now as independent adults. May they also lean into dependence on you, God. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, if everybody wouldn't mind, if you're able, please stand. And if you know this tune, sing along nice and loud. It don't have a job. Don't pay your bills.
to weather the storm and we'll be each other's keepers so the whole world will know that we're not alone so these are some of my favorite Sundays, which is probably good because of the job I have. Uh, but Senior Baccalaureate as well as Confirmation Sunday. You know, it's the Sundays where we get all, all the, these incredible students together. We get to celebrate them, highlight them, uh, congratulate them on their last chapter as well as wish, wishing them well on the next. And uh, hopefully we've been making a good first impression for, for them. Uh, I know for some of you, like, you might not know these seniors, and this is like literally the first time you've met them or seen them, and, and now you're celebrating them. So again, hopefully it's been a good first impression. Um, speaking of first impressions, I learned a few weeks ago that uh, Kenzie Meadows had a bad first impression of me when I started this job. Yeah, I'm telling this story right now. Uh, um, so in one of the first youth groups that I attended, it was probably the first or second, uh, Leah and I... <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling the story. Uh, shared some fun facts about ourselves, right? We were starting the job, and we're like, hey, here's some interesting tidbits about ourselves. And uh, I, I shared the fun fact that I had biked across the United States with some friends. Uh, except I didn't say that. I said I biked across America with some friends, which apparently at the time, Kenzie thought to herself, who is this guy who doesn't understand there's more than one America in the world? <laughs> and she... She called me some things in her head that I won't share now, but regardless, I'm really thankful for that feedback a few years later. She makes an excellent point, and I learned something. <laughs> See, we can learn from these guys. Um, I think about other first impressions. Elise, the first time I met her, asked me if I thought she looked like someone who owned a horse. <laughs> yeah, you're making that face, but I remember this. I didn't know how to answer. Um, Connor Lund, one of the first time I, I was around him, was getting his hair permed. Do y'all remember that? That was like my second week. I was like, all right, I guess anything goes. Um, I think the first time I met, met Addie Phillips was on a Zoom youth group, so full circle. She's watching online. Uh, they're watching online. Uh, but here's the thing. First impressions, they stick with people, right? Seniors next year, you're going to be making a lot of first impressions with roommates and classmates and professors. And I'm not saying that to be like, pressure's on, you better be cool so people like you. Uh, I bring that up because, you know, hopefully I, I speak for most folks here. I hope the first impression folks get of you are you being the truest versions of yourselves. The versions of yourselves that give you the most life, uh, the versions of yourselves uh, that you really want to be. I think most of us know this, it's so easy to just go along for the ride, right? And let others dictate who we are and how we act. And uh, I don't want society to have a greater impact on you than you have on society. I hope you make a positive difference. I hope you stay uh, in the driver's seat. So being in the driver's seat, yes, even at college with all of its newness, um, maybe most importantly, all the independence, uh, seniors, I hope you stay in the driver's seat of, of your faith and spirituality. Um, there's going to be a lot of exciting things, a lot of things that will draw your attention, and, and I hope you don't lose sight that you're a beloved child of God. You continue to discover what that means. Embrace that. Uh, you never forget that no matter what, um, you'll have a place here as home. And that each and every day you find moments to point yourselves towards love and justice and redemption just as Jesus did, both for yourselves and for others. I hope those can be pillars for you. But let's shift gears a little bit. Still kind of early. We're having a lot of heart-to-hearts, and maybe some of you are uncomfortable. Or maybe it's great. I don't know. We'll, we'll circle back to it. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit more about first impressions. Because at the end of the day, I think, I think our interactions with other people really inform our understanding of, our, uh, of religion, our experience of the divine. It's when we interact with people, right? Like maybe you meet people who um, uh, are really spiritual or profess to be a follower of Christ or say they're a Christian. And then what we kind of just 
watch what they say and see what they do and see what they prioritize. And uh, depending on those answers, we buy in or not. It influences kind of how we live. So I think there's going to be an impact. There's going to be a potential for how you show up next year. And I'm not saying, seniors, there's this one size fits all for next year. Like I know all of you have had your own faith journeys. It's looked different. Maybe you're feeling great. Maybe you've stepped away for a while. But wherever you're at, it's okay. I hope you know with everything I'm sharing this morning, it's just, it's meant to encourage you not fit in a box. Stay on your own journey. So when we're talking about being faithful people in new environments, uh, I, I want to bring Paul into the mix. I'm talking about Paul from Acts, so don't wait for a guy named Paul to walk up. Um, what Jeff read earlier, this is passage from Acts. Uh, and our guy Paul, he's in Athens, which isn't where he's from. Uh, it's pretty unfamiliar to him and his buddies. Uh, they're visiting and just to give you a little context, Athens is basically a place where it's a cultural hub. It's where all the people are at. They spend most of their time debating about philosophy and religion. Uh, verse 21 even says, people go there to basically do nothing but tell and hear about new things, which to me kind of sounds like college. So <laughs> you're going to be learning things, hearing things, debating with people. It's going to be a cultural hub. So that's what you got next year. And uh, for Paul, you know, when he shows up, he sees a lot of people are different. They believe different things. Uh, they maybe come from different backgrounds, different religions. Again, maybe similar to college. Uh, and Paul is really motivated to share the good news. He's really motivated to teach people about Jesus Christ. Uh, and as we know, there's a lot of different approaches to do that, right? Paul could have went downtown Athens and handed out some tracts and pamphlets he could have gotten out a megaphone on a street corner, which I know wasn't invented yet, but he could have rolled up some parchments. Uh, he could have asked people next to him in line, in the fruit vendor, what would happen to them if they died that day? Or I guess taking them on the circle of death, as Tony was talking about. Uh, he could have taken over Athens by force and forced people to convert to his religion. These are all approaches utilized at some point. I'll let you be the judge of how legitimate they are. But one of the things I really appreciate is how Paul shows up in this one specific instance. So it does say he did spend some time arguing in the synagogue and marketplaces, uh, which, again, you'll probably get in some arguments next year at college. Uh, but when they bring him to the uh, Areopagus, which is kind of like the town hall, the, gov the governing council, he's got a chance, an opportunity to make a, a lasting first impression. And I would say he... He approached it with a lot of care and a lot of respect. Uh, his in, basically, uh, he intros by talking about that altar that they have uh, that's made to the unknown God. Basically, it's them being trying to be inclusive and them saying, we don't know everything. Here's an altar to an unknown God to cover our bases. And he's like, hey, I know you guys like to talk about new things. I'd like to talk about that unknown God. He compliments them. He says, you guys are clearly religious. Uh, you take that seriously, and I see that. He spends time finding common ground. He says, hey, y'all believe that God created everything? So do I. Y'all believe that God is greater than our human imaginations? So do I. And he even studies their culture, and he quotes some of their Greek poets, as we see in line 28, uh, when he says, in him we live and move and have our being, and we are his offspring. So those aren't his words. Those are words that are familiar to the Athenians. So seniors, basically, it's not about Paul. You know, it's not simply uh, him telling him his truth and pushing his agenda, but he's really intentional about meeting people where they're at. Yes, he's sharing his faith. Yes, he hopes uh, to connect with them. But ultimately, we see, you know, it's not, super, it's not successful with everybody, right? Some people got really angry, scoffed at him, especially when he talked about the resurrection. But ultimately, he's trying to be a bridge, it's not about conversion or the end result. It's about caring enough to have a good process. We're lifting up one another's humanity is the core essence. I don't think believing in an all-loving God uh, and wanting to lift up one another's humanity are mutually exclusive. In fact, I think they're really intimately connected. Seniors, you've probably heard this a lot. We're really polarized right now as a society. I'm sure you've seen it, you've experienced it, whether it's assumptions being made about people, misinformation, but usually when two sides engaged, uh, they're not really trying to lift each other up, are they? It's a lot of 
There's a lot of demeaning, shouting, maybe some zingers. Seniors, I hope part of your first impression as well next year is that people experience you differently than the culture we've created. And I know you're going to get into some arguments, and I know there's going to be some things you disagree about. Um, And I get that, right? I get being passionate. I get having righteous anger. There's a lot of messed up things in our society. And maybe when you look at the gap between you and someone else, it seems really vast. But seniors, I don't think the path for transformation with people, with society, comes from zingers, comes from being right or being loud. Uh, I think transformation comes from being a bridge. I think it starts with you being grounded in who you are, having self-love and self-compassion, having this foundation of belovedness where you're seeking justice and love for others and wanting all the things you have for other people. And then your bridge and your connection to other people has the hope that they develop their own ability to have self-love and self-compassion, that they belong, and that they can be a bridge to others as they seek love and justice. You see how that's going. So I want you to be who you are. I want you to say what you need to say. I want you to fight the good fight, but I want you to hold up other people's humanity in the process, especially as you think about who they are in the eyes of God. Let's foster spaces and conversations and places where that can actually happen. All right, quick side note. I say this a lot when I talk because, and I'm going to keep saying it because I think it's worth saying. Uh, Friends, in the midst of everything I'm bringing up right now, please have good boundaries. I'm not up here saying uh, sacrifice yourself at all costs to help someone out. Um, You know, even when relationships are toxic. (laughs) I think there's a difference between helping people develop and grow, even when it's hard. You know, it can be hard. There's a difference between that and enabling unhealthy people who are unwilling to change. So I also pray that you can recognize the difference. Side note, over. Seniors, how you decide to show up next year has the power to bring life and light and love to others and animate what might be an unknown God to them. I know that everyone, you know, comes to religion and faith differently. And again, this conversation isn't about conversion. It's about being a bridge where when you advocate for love and justice, people might, you know, just maybe experience a God who's for them. A God who's always been there, who's always loved them. And we just haven't been very good at communicating or representing that. Friends, I think sometimes we forget how contextual the gospel is. It doesn't belong to one particular people group or culture or or generation. It transcends all of that, all of time, and has the ability to impact each of us and the whole of ourselves exactly where we're at. And to me, that's that's the timeless power of this faith we profess. So seniors, think about it. Think about the last 18 years. You know, your faith journey, the times you really wrestled, the times you really had questions, the times you really encountered God. What were those moments? What resonated with you the most? Was it finding love in dark moments? Was it feeling connection to others who might be imperfect but were committed to caring for you? Was it forgiveness or hope? Was it redemption? Was it feeling seen? Was it belonging, every part of you? Whatever it may be, I hope you can hold on to that. Because I think all those experiences we have collectively where we encounter God is why we do this. It's why we meet. It's why we call ourselves the church. It's so that we can participate in this faith journey together where each of us can experience the divine and have moments of epiphany and comfort and challenge. And hopefully we can offer that to other people as well. Seniors, in this next phase, you're going to experience a lot of things, good and bad. And this is how I'll end. This is, my, this is my prayer for you. Again, I pray that you lean into the best versions of yourselves that you can be, that you surround yourselves with loving friends and family, that you find moments to participate in God's story of redemption and restoration for all of creation. And in the process, help make known a God that some may not have known was there the whole time. You are a reflection of the divine 
And you have the power, the opportunity to help people feel seen and cared for and empowered as well. And just like the people you will meet in this next chapter, you too are a beloved child of God. And may you never forget that. Amen. Well, I'm really glad to be with you all and you all this morning. My first summer here, I got to go to Pyro, which I thought was really fun and awesome as well. And today, as this is the official Sunday of us as your church getting to bless you, I'm really glad we get to do communion. Because communion is a reminder about how Jesus was gathered with his friends around a table, like you're gathered around a table right now. And Jesus reminded them about what life was about and what faith was about. And Jesus took a symbol that was familiar to them. They were enjoying the Passover meal. And he took the bread and he said, this is my body that's broken for you. And I want you to remember that no matter where you go, every time you eat, that I'm for you and I'm with you and I'm in you. So I'd invite you, church, to likewise uh, take your communion cup or if you're at home, uh, grab your bagel or whatever you have. As we are gathered around these tables with these, our seniors, that the table would be a place of safety, a place of home, and a place where the God who we know continues to meet us. So take and eat this bread, which is the body of Christ, broken for you. And then we're told after supper that Jesus took some wine, which you can enjoy at 21, outside of communion. Uh, so Jesus took the cup that he was sitting around with his friends, likewise a symbol that they knew, and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And every time you drink, I want you to remember that I am for you. And so I invite you, dear friends, and us as a church, this is the, the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of God's rich love in Christ. So may this bread and this juice sustain you as you go forward. And I'm going to give you a little blessing prayer for you, our seniors, okay? And sorry, I wasn't paying enough attention to the elements you received. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace, okay? The last song we get to sing is the reminder that as God's beloved children, we are not alone in this journey. Not only does Christ and God's spirit go forth and go with us, but we get to lean on each other. So I invite you to stand and don't pretend that you haven't heard this song before because you might actually know the actions and you're welcome to do them if you know them. Let's sing together.
You may be seated. Uh, and always to introduce our wonderful band. Uh, for the first time ever, we have Kelsey Starr singing. Awesome. And Genevieve Callen singing. Yeah. Al Church on Electric. Yeah. I thought we talked about this. Weren't you going to play the acoustic today? Yeah. That's fine. It sounded good. <laughs> uh, we got Damon on the bass. And our man, Cissé, on percussion. Yeah. Uh, as we head to announcement time, I'd like to invite Elaine and, and Pete. Yep, Pete. Yep, come on, Elaine and Pete. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> I was going to leave the podium. Here. Good morning, all. Is this on? Okay. Um, I have three updates, so it'll be quick. Um, first of all, how cool to hear from the seniors that um, their mission trip was a good memory. Because on behalf of missions, <laughs> woohoo! Um, so I just want to also say thank you so much for the generosity that this community has provided over the last three months. My last update was uh, missional madness. And so we had three months of March, April, May of uh, recognizing our mission partners for those that were food dealt with food insecurity, housing and homelessness, and our community care. You all just showed up and I thank you so much. Um, yes. Um, we are not highlighting mission partners specific in June. Um, we have a couple other action items that I'll cover that in a minute. Um, and in July, we'll be covering our refugee ministry. So watch for the e-news with that. Where we need your help, two things. Uh, the first one is MRT survey. So on your bulletin, you'll see two QR codes. You can use those QR codes or you can go um, online in the e-news, there's also links there. But we would like to hear from you for the MRT survey to know where should we be focusing our interests and attention in terms of our missions going forward and the partnerships we're developing. So, so far we've heard like from 20, 25 people, I know there's more of you that care about missions, so please go out there and complete the survey. Um, a side note just on the survey, and then this next one that I'm gonna talk about, make sure that you complete all the items that are required, otherwise you won't be able to submit the survey. Um, the second QR code has to do with the tiny home project. In 2020, Meeting House Church built a tiny home and it was very fun, very rewarding. So I have Pete Welch, who was one of the um, leads, along with, Pete, or, along with Dave Pinsky and Adam Thompson, who put the um, 
plan and design together for the tiny home that we built. So Pete, with that being said, what is involved with building a tiny home? Uh, well, we, we, we team with Settled, uh, an organization that puts together owner or uh, part, uh, residents along with tiny homes. And uh, we fund and construct an eight foot by 20 foot tiny home in our parking lot. That sounds fun, and it was fun. So why did you get involved with the tiny home project? It evolved for me uh, 30 years ago, uh, helping the uh, colonial at now Meeting House, then be involved in Habitat for Humanity. This church has stepped up huge over many years to do things of this sort. And 20 years ago, it was with Total Victory Church with Alan Holt, and you remodeled his South Minneapolis church. Uh, volunteering again. Uh, and um, two years ago, we just said, you built a tiny home. You were one of, you helped build the tiny home that is uh, now part of the first sacred settlement in the country in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, it's uh, almost occupied. It's very close. So uh, you can be proud of that colonial meeting house that you have always stepped up to do things of this sort and we're gonna do it again. So what would you like to share with this community so that they too can get excited about being a part of building this tiny home? We can, uh, we're gonna be in gathering room one uh, after this service and we're happy to sh share with you everything. Uh, if you have been there before or di did it or haven't yet, we can answer some questions. Uh, we're uh, looking to sign you up that uh, we will be again uh, starting the, uh, the, the four to five consecutive weekends, uh, three day weekends, starting August 18th. Another tiny home being constructed here at Colonial Church. Meeting House. Meeting House Church. Thank you. <laughs> so as Pete said, if you're interested in learning more, you also can see some pictures from the tiny home that was built in 2020. After you congratulate these grand yes. graduates, yes. then you can head over to gathering room, gathering room one. It's just down the hall. Uh, as you go out the doors on your right, go down the hall on your left. Um, and we will be there to answer any questions. And as Pete said, to um, provide an opportunity to sign up. And there will be information there. You can also check e-news. There's an article out there. Um, that shares information and links to Settled so that you can understand more. It isn't just the laborers involved. It is also other ways that you can be involved in helping construct this tiny home. Please. Absolutely. Yes. You can bring treats for the people who are working. If you don't feel like you want to pound a nail, you can bring treats. So thank you so much. And congratulations, seniors. Congrats. You need that? I know. All right, real quick, announcement time. Uh, starting this Thursday, if you are interested, we are having Theology on Tap with Adult Ed. What is Theology on Tap? Basically, it's an opportunity to get together um, and discuss different theological issues. Uh, it's not going to be like guest speaker uh, focus. It's more about conversations with others. Uh, that is this Thursday from 6 to 7.30. I believe they are going to be hopping around to different breweries. So this Thursday will be uh, at Steel Toe. And obviously, you can drink whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> next Sunday, we have our, um, I believe it is for the entire church, but with a, sp a specific focus on our volunteers. So if you have volunteered in any way, in any way, uh, if you've been on a committee, if you've been uh, with one of the Emerging Generation youth groups, uh, children's ministry, deacon, usher, cleanup crew, kitchen crew, whatever, we want to eat brunch with you. So, um, and don't worry, we don't need volunteers for that event. Our ministers and staff will be volunteering for that. So that is next uh, Sunday after church. If you can, please RSVP to Michelle Stanky. And then uh, throughout the whole summer, every other Wednesday, we're going to be having uh, a summer park and play. Um, I already said that, every other Wednesday. So it's starting on June 15th. We're going to be at Roslyn Park from 5 to 7. This is open to everyone. Uh, obviously, like uh, hopefully the playground will attract uh, the kids who want to play in the playground. But if you just want to hang out, come, bring dinner. Uh, we will be there uh, enjoying the summer sun. 
Uh, as Elaine already alluded to after service today, we got a lot of sheet cake. So enjoy some cake, enjoy some coffee. Please come say hi to the seniors. Get, <laughs> prepare yourselves emotionally. Okay. Um, and wish them well. Uh, and as we uh, conclude today, oh, if you would like to give, uh, there are many ways to uh, give. Uh, you could check it out online. You could text the number behind me. Go old school with a, uh, an envelope with a cash and check, or we have a box up there. All right, now seniors, as we end today, I would like to uh, end with a poem. Uh, we've got gifts for you uh, later this morning. Spoiler alert, one of the gifts is a book of poems called We Rise Higher by Joe Davis, a poet in the Twin Cities who I really like. Uh, prayers and poems for graduates. So this is called Life. A prayer poem to remind us who's listening. I believe whether we know it or not, we are always talking with God. Laughing, weeping, raging, ranting, eating, sleeping, daydreaming, dancing. Everything above, below, or in between. Whispers and screams, mutters and moans, grunts and groans, more than wagging tongues, ebbing lungs, and tickled throats. Our body's language sings, letters and notes, books printed on skin and bone, sent back home, delivered through space and time. And each moment there is one who listens intently, bends gently, and responds in kind. Seniors, we love you, we'll miss you, and we will see you around. Let's enjoy some cake, folks. Thank you.